All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're actually gonna be talking about five reasons why you do not need a NAS. Now, coming from this channel, you might be very surprised I'm having this video, but in all honesty, numerous times I've had clients who come to me because they have some IT guy who says, oh, you absolutely have to have this NAS, which honestly complicates their system. And so in all reality, a NAS is not really the end-all be-all solution for every single person. There's a lot of key reasons why a NAS might just be wrong for you. And that's kind of why I've thrown together a list of them because in all reality, you should ask yourself, do I need a NAS before buying one? As you may have seen on this channel, I absolutely love NAS. I use them for everything. I've got tons of them running. I've got an entire server rack in there running them. And it's crucial to my business and how I run everything. But for a lot of people, you can get by without one. And if you can, in some ways, it's going to be a lot better of experience. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so now to keep me on track, I've got a list that I wrote up right here and I've also got some lovely props to kind of demo some things. So this right here is the new Synology 1522 Plus. Awesome NAS, has 10 gigabit capability. Absolutely love the thing. Great starter NAS. And this right here is actually a eight terabyte DAS. So before we get into this, let's go over what a DAS is and what a NAS is, because that's kind of the crux of this entire thing. So a DAS stands for Direct Attached Storage, and a NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. And so those are really the two different big differences in these things. So for something like a DAS, you have essentially just a hard drive that communicates directly with your computer. Your computer controls everything. It tells it where to write data. It does everything for you. When you've got a NAS, a NAS is actually a server. There is a CPU in here. There's an entire another computer in this box, which is controlling the data. Your computer only requests files and things like that from the NAS. You can make a NAS look like a DAS with iSCSI, but that's out of the scope of this video. But essentially, whenever you've got a NAS, you have an entire server running which is great. There's a lot of really powerful things you can do with it, but it also adds complexity. And that's one of the key reasons here. And just to clear something up here, you can also buy a DAS that looks very much like this box right here, where you've got five hard drive bays, eight hard drive bays, and your computer sees it as one big hard drive and it handles the rate itself. So you're absolutely able to do that. You can buy those. This right here is just an easy explanation and a company sent me this and I've been having a lot of fun testing it out. All right, so now starting at the top of the list, number five is you have programs that will not run on a NAS. This is actually really common to have programs that do not allow you to store their files on a NAS. You can get around this in most cases, but for most time they say, nope, you can only store them locally. The easiest one that comes to mind is Adobe Lightroom. Adobe Lightroom will not let you store the .lrc, that Lightroom catalog file on a NAS. That's for two reasons. One, they want to make sure that two people are not editing the exact same catalog at the exact same time just because Adobe cannot handle that. And two, you do get some latency issues, especially when you've got a database stored on a NAS. And I'm going to get to that in a little bit here, but Adobe will not let you. And there are a lot of programs that simply will not allow you to store your files on a NAS. Steam for a while there would not let you store your programs on a NAS. They've since allowed that. And there's always ways to get around these things using stuff like iSCSI but you lose a lot of the benefits of a NAS when you do those things. So number five is pretty simple. You have programs that simply will not support it. Then number four, you want a simple setup. I absolutely love NASs. They're great. They're complex. They are not turnkey, get data on the drive, easy. This, you plug into your computer, your computer sees data, you put data on there. That's it. That's really all there is when you're setting up a DAS. At most, you may have a little pop-up program that you install and you say, hey, I wanna set up this RAID 5. Really can be done in 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, if you don't really know what you're doing. And it's just there. It's simple to understand. You know the data is just there, and that is it. For a NAS, it involves setup. You have to do a lot of configuration to get it to a normal place. It probably would take most users maybe 45 minutes to get a bare bones NAS if they don't really know what they're doing. And that's a lot of time. And then there's a lot of pieces on there that add in. And in a lot of cases, it may be easier just not to get a NAS and instead just stay with hard drives because there is a huge advantage to that. So yeah, for number four, it's pretty easy. You want a simple setup. Then number three is you want and need the fastest possible speeds. So this right here, a NAS, is a server. That means every single time your computer wants a file or any data from it at all, it's got to go through a series of protocols. It's got to go over the network. 
it's got to have the NAS request the file from the hard drives. And so essentially there's an entire extra layer, there's an entire another system added on in between your computer and the hard drive or whatever you're storing the data on. And so because of that, for equivalent hardware, a NAS will always be slower than a DAS. There are some things that a NAS can do to kind of cheat that. There are things such as NVMe caching, that's called SSD caching, where you've got hard drives in your NAS, but you also have NVMe SSDs, very fast SSDs. And what the NAS can do, since it's an entire server and it's got its own CPU, is it can intelligently say, hey, we've recently used that file. Let's go ahead and keep it in that really fast SSD. And then when he needs it next time, we'll return it from the SSD rather than having to go to the slow hard drives. So there are some things that a NAS can do to speed itself up. But if you implemented that caching on your local computer with a DAS, note this is normally a lot more complex than it is with a NAS, the DAS would outperform the NAS. And so if you need the fastest possible speeds, especially with the lowest possible latencies, a DAS will always be faster. This right here out of the box can do 2.7 gigabytes per second, pretty much all day. That would require a 25 gigabit setup for your computer, which would cost thousands of dollars, and it'd be very hard to actually get those speeds. The maximum possible speeds I've really been able to get out of a NAS using the SMB protocol, which is how the vast majority of users will be interfacing with a NAS, is about 2.2 gigabytes per second with a 25 gigabit setup for a video production house. And that's fast, but that took a lot of tuning and still gets beat by this. It's always going to be slower having a NAS than a DAS. So if you need crazy fast speeds, a DAS is going to give you those speeds much, much, much quicker. All right, and so that was number three. Now two is pretty simple. You only need to access your files on a single computer. If you only ever have to access your files on a single computer, and that's just how you live your life, and basically you've got one desktop at your house or one laptop, then a DAS may really just be the easiest thing for you. You don't have to have any of the additional configuration, and by only needing to access your files from a single computer, you do really lose one of the biggest benefits of a NAS, and that's for the ability for multiple computers at multiple locations, all to be able to be accessing the exact same files in numerous different ways. But if you don't need that at all, the real benefits of a NAS kind of go by the wayside and the downsides really start to add up. So if you only ever need to access your files from a single computer, you may really wanna ask yourself, do I need a NAS or will a DAS work just fine? All right, so now number one is something a lot of people really do not think about until it goes time and they've actually implemented a NAS. And it's actually a huge cost savings. And that is, if you have a DAS, you can back up your entire DAS for $7 a month from Backblaze. So Backblaze has not paid me to do this or anything. They don't know I'm doing this video at all. I think I've got an affiliate program. It's never paid me any money with them, but I'll leave a link to the description below. But Backblaze has the ability to back up any computer with any amount of hard drive space on it, with any amount of external hard drives hooked up to it for a single $7 a month fee. So that is something that is really, really beneficial to having a DAS because you should be backing up your data. So with a DAS, you can back up 50 terabytes for $7 a month. Even if you just had 10 terabytes on a NAS and you wanted to back that up to Backblaze, that would cost you $50 a month. It is one of those things where there is a huge cost savings if you are planning on using Backblaze to stick with a DAS because you can really save a lot of money in those fees. It is one of those things where I don't know if Backblaze is going to continue to do this because you can pretty easily buy a 100 terabyte RAID and stick it right into your computer and that is going to be costing them a lot of money and they're only gonna be making $7 a month. But having that ability is absolutely huge and it really is one of those things where it can be a turning point to making a NAS very expensive because you need to make sure you're backing it up. And so those are the five reasons why before you buy a NAS, you should really think about, hey, can this just be a DAS? Now that being said, these downsides are outweighed by a ton of unbelievable features. There's a reason why a ton of people buy NASs. But before going straight into a NAS, ask yourself if a DAS is worth it for you. If you'd like to hire me for a project, I've got a link for that in the description below. Do this professionally now, full time. And if you have any other questions or what your opinions are, put them in the comments below. All right, have a good one. Bye.